Hey everyone, this is Scott from servmedia.com. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how your robots.txt file should look in 2020. Uh, as you can see, I'm using my editor in Yoast SEO. You can use FTP or any other type of editor that you have for your robots.txt file. Uh, either way, this is my robots.txt file, and it's probably going to look a little different from, from yours, and we're going to talk about that. There's a couple things we need to understand. First of all, if you're setting to disallow a plugin access to anywhere in your WP includes your plugins folder, your themes folder, I would remove those right away. You don't even need to do it for search queries now anymore. And there's a couple of reasons why. Number one, you should not disallow the bot access to your CSS and your JS. The reason for this is it can prevent Googlebot from properly rendering your website. Googlebot can render CSS and JS now. The advantage to this is that it allows it to understand if a website is mobile friendly or not. And if you've ever gotten a website is not mobile friendly test, even though you go to it on your mobile device and it's completely acceptable and just like every other website, it's probably because you were blocking access to your WP uh, content plugins folder or themes folder. My general advice is that it, your the robots at TXT should be pretty empty for most websites. And you don't even need to include a disallow rule for the WP admin URL anymore. And we're going to show you why here in a minute. Actually, we'll just do it right away. So we're going to log me out of this website. And WP login.php, as you can see here, is fairly straightforward, but we have one important rule here, meta name, robots, content, no index, and no archive. The no archive rule isn't really all that important, but the fact that it's no index is all that really matters. And um, Yoast SEO in particular sets a rule in the HTTP header that prevents bots from indexing WP admin if they attempt to go to that folder directly. And the reason that you want to use no index instead of disallow is that disallow isn't foolproof. Um, if I have a website, if, let's say I have on my website, let's go to the homepage. I want this article regarding this Hyundai Kona to not be indexed. So I add it to my disallow in my robots.txt. But let's say that I linked to it from another post that I did allow to be indexed. The problem here is that because it was linked to, that URL will now be associated with that anchor text. The only way to stop a URL from ever being indexed is to include the no index tag on the specific page. The problem with robots.txt blocking is it isn't foolproof. And you really don't need it for anything. Using the no index header is honestly the best way to go. And most of your SEO plugins allow this to be handled with relative ease. Um, if I wanted to set it to no index in Yoast SEO, I would reload this page still need to update the share buttons too. I would edit the page. I would scroll down the article, find the Yoast SEO box, click the advanced section, and then say no. And you could do this for bulk types of content. The great thing is, is it also prevents indexation of other types of content, such as your search queries. We'll just search for the letter S because I don't know what to search for. And if you search for it again, there you go, robots, no index, follow. And this is typically the best thing you want to do. You also just avoid issues with, apparently I didn't save, or I did, but I wasn't paying attention. You also just avoid issues with potentially bad URLs from ending up in index because you only disallowed them. My other rule is I tend to add the sitemap index URL into my robots.txt. While this is considered to be more of an older practice, I do it because sometimes I honestly just don't add the sitemap URL sometimes. Um, Bing, there's a ton of offshoot uh, search engines that will check robots.txt, but don't necessarily have a means of submitting a sitemap to them. While Google does, and it's the most important, there is Bing as well, and they do it through their own webmaster tools. Um, offshoots like DuckDuckGo, I believe, don't have a direct way for you to submit your sitemap to it. If I'm wrong about DuckDuckGo, somebody please comment. I don't actively use it. I just use Google. 
and I have Google devices everywhere. But that's my general advice here. So user agent should be set to star and your sitemap should be this way. If you want content to not be indexed, set it to have a no index attribute and that is totally the best way to do it. If you have your own thoughts and opinions, please, I'd love to hear them. Put them in the comments below and I'll try to answer your questions. Otherwise, make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.